Hello and welcome to the Churros e Tacticus podcast. This is your host, Kian Sobani. I am joined by Diego Lorin. And today's kind of podcast, um, I rolled the R's and we're not sure who will do the intro. Diego, very upset before recording. He said, well, you're your national team one. You got to do the intro. You France one. Ho, ho, ho. And I don't know. I just kind of shrugged my shoulders because like I think every Real Madrid fan in these moments and it kind of happened during the last World Cup where Spain played against Portugal and Real Madrid Spanish fans saw Spain go up uh, a, f- a few goals and then Ronaldo scored a hat trick and it was 3-3 and they were just kind of it was the Alonso morning gif where you're shaking your head and then you shrug your shoulders you're like, well, at least the Madridista did some damage to us. Um Anyways, I, I I don't actually feel that strongly. Spain, anti-Spain, Lucho, anti-Lucho, Benzema, Mbappe, all that stuff. I just like to watch fun football. Um, but I know and, Diego... And put out very fun tweets. For sure. I mean, that's half of it. I mean, I don't know what we did before 2007, before Twitter existed. I don't even know how we enjoyed this sport. I really don't. It's just made everything more fun and more toxic. So, uh, Diego, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Up, are, you, are you recovered from what happened yesterday? Uh, if by yesterday you mean a day, what is it, real birth celebration, um, I'm not recovered yet and I have one more night to go. Uh, my best friend is still here for another evening, so I've got one more night to get through. Today was tough because it was in, back in the office, of course. Uh, but the birthday celebrations aside, this game uh, made me feel great about the philosophy that Lucho brings to his teams and um, very disappointed about the result and very disappointed about your tweet as well. Not sure where you were getting at with the Benzema and Mbappé say hello to Diego, but for somebody who was calling Spain we and us against them and to have now joined the petty Madridistas that don't support the Spanish national side for very petty and salty reasons, Ian. Can I? Can I hold I, higher standard. You're better than that. Can I put a? Pers- I want to put to, uh, a scenario forth to you, and just wanted to just see how you would feel and be honest about this situation. And I, I just want to, because I think a lot of people are mad at Madridistas for being happy about Spanish Madridistas rather for being happy about Benzema and Mbappe taking Spain down yesterday. I just want to put something in perspective for you. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but just a perspective. Let's say if Spain had no Barca players, which, you know, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but like last summer, Barcelona players, just like kind of Real Madrid players, to be quite honest, had very little influence on the national team. But let's say Spain had no Barcelona players and you're Spanish. And, um, and all of a sudden, it's Messi and Mascherano. They're still playing for Barca. And Argentina beats Spain. And Mascherano assists Messi. And Messi beats Spain. At least there's a little part of you that's like, all right, well, that's not the worst scenario. Right? Be honest. I mean, no. I, I would... I'm, I'm, my teams, Kian, you know, are Barca, Oranje, y La Roja. Uh, okay, those are my maybe three you're teams. an exception then. Okay, okay, then. Well, then maybe it maybe the better parallel for you specifically would be if if it's the Netherlands and De Jong scores the winning goal. In that case, you wouldn't be, you know. Ah, well, that's a win-win scenario. We're going back to the 2010 World Cup final, but uh, I just don't understand these petty Madridistas, in part- the, the Spanish ones um, in particular. Of course, I get that international ones will um, you know pick and choose a side when it comes to the. Uh, international teams uh, and good for them as they should but uh, yeah i have a big bone to pick at the moment with the press in particular the madrid press because also they are joining in on this uh Mm. narrative that is this anti-lucho narrative Mm. which i think is nonsensical i think it's shameful and i think it's just blatantly wrong. Um, I think Luis Enrique now more than ever just showed exactly the master, masterful coach that he is uh, with a, a very clear philosophy and is able to make his players, um, you know, march to his beat 
and fulfill the orders that uh, he, he expresses to them during the few training sessions that they have together. I was, you know, very pleased with Spain's performance. I thought that you, you, you mentioned that Mbappé and Benzema, um, I forget the word you use now, wiped the floor with Barca or, or, or got, got rid of Barca, got done with Barca, uh, excuse me, Spain. Um, you know, I, I didn't see it that way. I thought that Spain deserved the win on the night. And I thought because of very flagrant and erroneous refereeing decisions, the Kunde handball, the Mbappé offside, those two not being called, prevented Spain from getting the deserved victory and thereby uh, Lucho winning the uh, UEFA Nations League Cup. Unfortunate, unfair, that's football. But Jesus Christ, I thought VAR you know, would was going to clear things up. And yet here we are again, season 2021-22, and still with the same arguments that we've been having for whenever, you know, VAR began to be introduced to the game. Uh, what is it? Two, three years ago now. And, uh, you know, what? Where, where's the criteria? You know, where's the criteria what, that referees can base clear decisions on? Uh, because for me, it was very clear. And, and I would love to know your thoughts as well. Handball from Kunde, <clears throat> clear offside of, by Mbappé. And that was clearly the, the difference maker. Let's bring forward the controversy. I think that's it's a little bit too soon for that on the podcast. I have some thoughts about what you said. Uh, okay. I, I certainly, I don't know if I ever used those words. If I did, I didn't mean to, whether it's wipe the floor or whatever. I think it just, I basically just said beat Spain. And, and that's how I really okay. felt. I thought, I thought the margin in the, this game, it could have gone either way. I thought, you know, Spain had a lot of the ball, obviously, but I thought they struggled to get the ball in the final third. And I think that's a testament to the way France defended. They defended much better than Italy did. Um, their press was better. Their transition defense was better. And I thought all three of the starting center backs, I'll say, I'll say starting because I don't think, I think Kim Pembe, I don't know what the hell he was doing on the Oyarzaba goal. He came in for Varane, but Varane, uh, or sorry, not Kim Pembe, uh, Upa Meccano, but, Upa uh, Meccano, yeah. but Varane and Kim Pembe and Kunde in particular, Kunde was awesome. I thought they all defended well. Um, I also thought Spain were dominant on the ball, but I, but I, so I, I think there's easily Spain would have deserved to win if it, if, if it stayed 1-0 or, you know, they won 2-1 or whatever. But I also think France defended well. And then towards the end of the second half, they started to just kind of grow into the game as it did against Belgium. But um, the idea of the the Lucho, the anti-Lucho agenda, and I didn't check any Spanish papers today, but I agree with you. I think it's ridiculous too. That's why I... I'm the one who put that tweet on Churros. I think a lot of people think that you're tweeting a lot of this stuff, but I actually, I'm tweeting it just because I like to jab Maridisas too. I like to test them a little bit. I like to see mm -hmm. what they say. So I tweeted, listen, Maridisas were Spanish. So all of a sudden you would have supported Spain if Lucas Vasquez or Nacho were sitting on the bench yesterday. What made, what difference mm -hmm. does it make? It doesn't make any difference. Um, so all of a sudden that is what shifts your attention. Now, I think it is interesting. One person said, you know, well... Let's wait and see. Uh, if when Carvajal is healthy and Ramos are healthy, will they get selected? I think that'll be the ultimate test on what Lucho's agenda is. But Ramos has been called before. Carvajal's been called before. So I don't, I don't think it's something that Lucho's going to, you know, it's not a conspiracy. I really don't believe that. I, I believe that Lu, Luis Enrique is not a Real Madrid fan. That's public knowledge. But unless he starts not taking Ramos and Carvajal when they're healthy, that's when I would, would actually start to look at a conspiracy. But until then, let's let's table the discussion. Um, I what, what else did you say that I should have taken notes on what you said? But is there any? I felt but, that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I just felt that. Um, I thought I felt that you know Spain. Uh, listen, th there were talks here of Baño, like you know, dominated basically gave a master class to friends. I wouldn't go that far neither, is, but I mm -hmm. Spanish media. Me? You no, mean? I, oh, some, some lads on the radio, uh, yeah. were talking about, you know, uh, uh, un baño, basically like a, a sheer domination and annihilation of friends. I wouldn't go that far neither, but I do, I did feel absolutely that Spain, uh, was more in control of the ball. I think, I mean, obviously the position stats say that in and of itself, um, that Spain pressed, France deeper into their half, which is not uncommon for France. Neither France is a 
team that is quite comfortable when they're not having their day to also sit deep and then play in a counterattack. I mean, the, the, the thing really that separates uh, this side so much, these two sides so much, is the individual talent as opposed to, you know, the unity or, or yeah, I guess the squad, the ability to play as a squad, to play as a unit, as a team um, between France and, and, and Spain. France, obviously, a side that is filled with, you know, a plethora of talent, whether you're looking in the back and the mid and the front teams that makes positions in, in most teams. Um, on the other hand, you look at Spain, you know, very solid in defense, uh, excuse me, in the midfield rather. Uh, offensively, they're clearly lacking somebody, the likes of Ansu Fati as well, that will give them more efficiency and effectiveness in front of goal. Uh, and defensively, they're quite frail and quite, it's probably the weakest area, um, I would you know, safely say. But their press has been amazing. And, but and their press has been... Re- well, that, yeah. And that goes to show exactly the, that how well they click together and function as a unit. Sorry, I was giving you space there to jump in with your press Oh, sorry. Argument, and at yeah. the same time, my lights flickered, so I thought <laughs> I lost internet connection for a sec, so I just kind of paused. Uh, yeah, look, I think that's all true. And I think that... When you look, and, and yeah, and this whole Banyo thing, either way, I, I don't think it's true. I think the game was more even than we all realize. Maybe you sit on one side of the fence, so yeah, depending on who you support, I'm not sure. But I think uh, even Spain's defense like has held mm. up pretty well with Pau Torres and Laporte. Laporte was amazing yesterday. And Eric Garcia, who got criticized a lot for starting because, to be honest, Pau Torres did nothing wrong to get benched because I thought he was good against Italy too. But Eric Garcia played well yesterday too. Um, so even the defense has held up. I think, like, and with France, by the way, I've I've long had this opinion that I almost feel like the way I feel about Barca, I feel about France in some capacity in the sense that I think France are too good to be playing boring football. Like, they're just not mm. that exciting with the names they have, with the talent they have. But right. they're exciting when they have to be. Like, if they go down a goal... Like, when they went down two goals against Belgium, they came out in the second half, and they just went and destroyed them. That's the Mm -hmm. way they should be doing. Like, put your foot on the pedal a little bit. They go down against Spain, one goal, and all of a sudden they have to attack, and all of a sudden, lo and behold, like, the magic comes out, right? And I think, Mm. so, that's just something, personally, I I, I have against France, is, like, you should be giving us more exciting football than what you're showing us, because we're selfish neutrals. We want to see fun football. You have Mbappe, Benzema, Griezmann, Pogba, make it work. Um, And so... So, but that's an aside. That's for the that's for the croissant e tacticas podcast, as we said on Twitter. But I think with Spain, you, you mentioned Ansu. I wanted to ask you a question, actually. Hmm. The Spain team doesn't have superstars, but it has a lot of stars. Like Ferran is a freaking star hmm. in a lot of ways. He just doesn't have that flashy mm-hmm. name, but he can do so many great things. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's not just for Fedan. That's for a lot of other players in the squad. I don't want to name all of them. But um, Pedri's coming back. Ansu's coming back. Whoever else I'm missing, please help me out. But if if Luis Enrique is making it work with all these really good players, is there something that Kuman can learn from that? Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at the, the name. Uh, Busquets was... Un- Busquets named uh, the... He received an award yesterday. It wasn't yeah. it was like player of the for, tournament. Player of the tournament or like for this round at least or something. I don't know. And he was amazing in the last couple of games. He dictated mm-hmm. play. Everything went through him. What is it that I just don't like Kuman playing this victim card where he's like mm-hmm. our team isn't good enough. You gave me this team and I have to mm-hmm. make it work. What what happens if Luis Enrique coaches Barcelona? You know what I mean. So is there anything that mm-hmm. we Barca, and I'm saying I said we. It wasn't a slip. It's because I think I, last podcast when you were away, I mentioned all the things that Real Madrid could learn from them, namely their press and how impressive that is. Mm-hmm. What can Real Madrid and Barcelona learn from Spain? Is my question. Yeah. Well, listen. I think the very clear idea of of having. You know, and you're gonna, you're probably gonna smirk or laugh, or Madridistas listening will not like me saying this, but I think a very clear Cruyff-like way of playing football. That's what I take away from it. I saw Luis Enrique that is very was very identifiable from his time at Barca, uh, in particular, naturally. Um, 
and uh, a way of making a team function, play with, you know, a, a purposeful football, in, intense football, um, pressing together as a unit, uh, working together as a team, the passes, um, you know, being purposeful and intentful, moving forward, um, and having not necessarily star players still perform at, okay, maybe not their very peak. I'm not saying he's getting 100% production out of each and every single play, but, you know, you bring in Kuman into the equation and Angelotti, uh, I guess the question is how much is Luis Enrique able to get out of his players of their potential, I guess, of their maximum. Uh, if we have a put, if we have to put a percentage on it between zero and a hundred at what scale do Kuman and, and Angelotti uh, score and where, what does Luis Enrique score? And I think with this Spain team, Luis Enrique has done fantastically well or is doing fantastically well, despite all of the, the continued criticism. Um, and, you know, I'll let you answer the questions, uh, these two questions in, in terms of putting a grade on, on Angelotti and Kuman. It is Monday. I need to, you know, kind of filter myself to, from getting too um, uh, loose with open with my question, with my answers here, my statements and my opinions. But um, I, I think the answer is pretty obvious, Kian. I guess that's what I'm getting to. Right? I think yeah. that has done a fantastic job with this group of players that is filled with young talent, you know, and, 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 I mean, Busquets was the player of the tournament. Um, he brought in Gavi, and Gavi looked like he fit right in. Uh, again, despite all of the, uh, I, I, I guess, the eyebrows that were raised upon uh, uh, his call up to the Spanish national side, Luis Enrique knows what Gavi can give him. Luis Enrique has a very clear idea of the style of football that he wants to play. And he knows that the Gavis and the Busquetses have been playing that style of football since the age of seven, eight years old. Um, so he knows perfectly how to use these players in the system and the style of football that he wants to apply and execute. That's what we've seen from Spain. This narrative that you need star players or the most, you know, very talented world-class household name players in order to win games is just false. And, um, and again, I commend Lucho for, for achieving this with the Spain side. Yeah. And, and I think like with, in a lot of ways, I feel like a game like this exposes people like Kuman and Ancelotti. And again, what I said on the Friday show when you were, were away was that Ram should have, haven't figured this press at all. In fact, it arguably has even gotten worse game to game. And they're so hell-bent on being a high-pressing team that they, if they don't figure it out, they're screwed because their offense is not going to sustain and it's already unsustainable. We've seen that in the past three games. And Lucho, for a team that doesn't play together often, uh, and especially, well, because they're a national team, but also because he has a lot of variance in his lineups too, like players come and go. We have new mm -hmm. faces. Gabby's a new player this time. Um, it still is so efficient and that's impressive. And with Barca, I just think like when you see the way Luis Enrique played with similar players, some of them the same players, um, and, and not only that he's made it work, but he's also gotten everyone to buy in. Everyone likes Luis Enrique, who's been called up. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we talk about like these enemies and stuff with whether Real Madrid mm -hmm. and stuff. Sergio Ramos and Luis Enrique are really good friends. Like they, they can buy in to what Luis Enrique is saying. And that Koeman just doesn't have that power over his team, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. We're unbelievably short for time because I have to go soon. But I so we should talk about the referee stuff. Yeah. And I know that you, uh, because you've been partying and it's your birthday weekend, every, your Instagram story is you're living like a rock star right now and taking pictures with all these people. Um, <laughs> and maybe you're hungover. It's, it's possible that you didn't see, it, but there was an explanation given as to why okay. that goal was disallowed. And Fantastic. it's not like it's not because he wasn't offside. Everyone mm -hmm. agrees that he was offside. I mean, it's geometry proof that everyone you look at the mm -hmm. screen, you look at the lines. Mbappe was offside when Taylor released the pass. The pass. The explanation given by the referee was that, um, and this is a stupid rule, stupid, 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 stupid rule. It needs to be changed. But technically speaking, if because uh, Eric Garcia went to intercept the pass, the offside no longer was from Teo's pass, 
Eric Garcia, it counted as a pass from Eric Garcia, and you can't be offside if a defender passes you the ball. So when Eric Garcia defends it and intercepts it, and basically the ball goes to Mbappe, it gets reset from there, and Mbappe was onside. Bullshit. What? It's a stupid rule. That's I know. insane. It's a stupid rule. That makes no sense. Makes no sense. And this has been, I think in the past like two or three years, this has happened three times in football that I'm aware of, at least in major games. It's happened a couple times in the Premier League. And the same, the same dialogue uh, started there where it was everyone was like, this is stupid, this needs to change. Um, and it makes no sense. And there's actually a, a quote from Busquets that I agree with completely. He said after the game, uh, and I have it here. We posted it on our Twitter too. He said, Busquets says, quote, to us on the field, the second goal looked offside. The referee told us that since Eric tried to play the ball, the offside was canceled. But that doesn't make any sense. He just tried to intercept the ball. He didn't play it and lose What's he going to do? It. Exactly. Exactly. What is he going to do? Mm. But it? So Because now, especially with referees allowing play to continue, you, what are you going to do? You have to try to make a move for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it just doesn't make sense. What if Mbappé would be standing offside by, say, five meters, just sitting and waiting for a ball yeah. that's being passed to him while he's in an offside position, last defender touches it, and then what? He's onside automatically? Right. Yeah, it's it, exactly. It, it makes no that's sense. That's insane. And, and like, it's it's funny. And, that. Like, we grew up playing football, and our coaches always told us, play to the whistle, right? Play to the whistle, right. no matter what, until the referee blows the whistle, you don't stop playing, because just in case. So imagine hearing that your whole life, and then all of a sudden, you do yeah. that, and then the rule fucks you over because so if Eric Garcia like was like okay this is offside I'm not going to intercept it you know it it just it makes no logical sense to have the rule this way Absolutely. they should the, the play should have just been once Teo once Teo passes it that's where it starts that Mbappe is mm -hmm. offside end of his end of discussion that's it right yeah so it's yeah. a dumb it's a harsh way to lose a game in my opinion I think FIFA UEFA everybody needs to just look at that so. That is very weird. Yeah. I mean, that, that just goes, it's, it's anti-football. It's anti what we've always known it to be. I, I, I'm, I'm stunned. Yeah. I'm stunned by that. Yeah. And what about the handball then? I didn't see anyone make a big deal out of that. I don't know. Uh, I think it's because they, uh, it, it was a clear handball, but I think it's, and I, I don't really know. I have to look at it again, but I think it's because it was kind of behind him and maybe he just didn't know anything about it. I mean... Kunye he could turns. Be, Kunde could be really smart and try to like just pull it off Clearly. and do it on purpose. But yeah. I mean, I suppose that's less controversial than the Mbappe thing. Mm. Yeah. So. Well, too bad. Uh, game lost for saying trophy, a, a missed opportunity to win a trophy where we're all kind of wondering still at this point, what does it mean? <laughs> what is the UEFA Nations League exactly? Where does it stand in terms of European like ranks, so where does it rank? What in, in, the, <laughs> in the hierarchy of trophy? I don't know. Is it better? It's not bigger than than Euro, Euro Cup. Clearly not. Well, no. Um, but there is prize money, and it's better than friendlies. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it is better. But hey, but there's so much complaint. I mean, the players are really suffering. Kian. I agree. Uh, uh, Courtois had some bangers yesterday. He was like, I, yeah, yeah, before yeah. the game and after the game, he was like, this is why are we playing this game? This means nothing. This is a money grab for FIFA UEFA. We're going to get injured. They're running us into the ground. They don't care about us. I agree with him. It's stupid. Uh, but, you know, they would have replaced this with friendlies. And this is better than friendlies, I'd say. But I would say at least yeah. with friendlies, you had the option to rest players, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I think they, I think you can have, I think this was a successful experiment if you ask me, but I think they can trim the calendar elsewhere apart from this one. Like don't mm -hmm. have this stupid uh, thing, the third place game, or at least just call it a friendly. I, I, it was a friendly anyway, I guess. I think Belgium Italy both rest the players. I didn't watch it, but, um, and I, I think their explanation actually was that we want everyone to play two games. So this was just basically their second game. Um, everyone else had friendlies or qualifiers to play in. So, um, yeah, too much football. That's a, that's a that's a discussion for another day. I got to go, Diego. Um, this is wait, wait, last one. Madrid, mm -hmm. this is like Gabi now. You guys calm down a little bit on that uh, front or I, also not? I don't know. It probably depends on who you ask. Uh, you. You. I never, I never didn't like Gabi. I just, and again, I, and I, I'm at a point now where 
I don't really have grounds to criticize Luis Enrique for player selection anymore because he does the talking on the field. And, you know, I, I, was, I was confused as to why Pau Torres and Koke were dropped against uh, France after they played so well against Italy. Eric Garcia played well. Uh, Rodri, I actually didn't think, had a good game against France, so maybe Koke should have started that game. But I, I just can't criticize anymore. Um, I, I think Brahim's had an unbelievable season. I think he's better than Gavi, but Gavi's been great. So what am I going to complain about? I don't. I've never. I never didn't like the idea I, of Gavi personally. I just. I think. I think. I think Not people me. are. I think Real Madrid fans are upset at for obvious reasons. That's all it is. My man, my man, you're back, baby. <laughs> I could say right, more. I just gotta go. I gotta go. Happy gotta Thanksgiving. Go. Happy Thanksgiving know, this to Canadians. Quick one. Canadians, not Americans. Canadians. Americans do their th- turkey thing, football, and during football season, it's a big, big deal. Uh, yeah. In Canada, we are doing it on a different. We always do it on a different weekend. So happy Thanksgiving to Canadians. Uh, I'm gonna go to turkey dinner at my sister's, uh, and. I'll have this uploaded later tonight. Diego, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Good. birthday. Send my yes. love to everybody. And we'll chat Friday okay. over on patreon.com slash churrosy tacticas. Peace. That's good, buddy. Peace out.